afternoon and welcome to Across the Fence, I'm Keith Silva. On this Halloween edition of the program, we're going to talk about something that many Americans believe in, ghosts. In an article from 2021, the New York Times cited several different polls that had asked people about the supernatural. Depending on how the question was asked, what do you fear as opposed to what do you believe, the Times reported the results varied from a third of respondents to about half of those surveyed believed in the paranormal. One thing that we can all agree on is that these spectral spirits have been haunting American culture through books, movies, and TV, and that's what we're going to discuss today. Our guest is Tony Magistrali. For the past four decades, Tony has led students, to quote the raven, tonight's Plutonian shore, in classes about Stephen King, the Gothic, and the literary vampire. Thanks for talking with me today, Tony. My pleasure, Keith. Good to see you again. Good to see you again, as always. Um, let's begin with an easy question. Have you ever had a paranormal experience? Um, I have. I have had a paranormal experience. Okay. One of the categories that you listed uh, as to where people are associate Ball, the yeah. paranormal, mm -hmm. um, you forgot to include sports. Oh, okay. <laughs> every, yes. every time I go to Gillette Stadium, <laughs> <laughs> I see ghosts. You see ghosts, okay. I see ghosts. <laughs> okay, okay. And, and unfortunately, those ghosts now haunt the stadium. Mm. And I think that this is going to bode badly for Mr. Belichick and, okay. and his and his minions. Okay, it's a, we, 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 we've had different conversations about uh, <laughs> horror, but also sports over the years, um, and we'll have to leave that one there. We could talk about curses, but that's a much different that's a much different a show. Whole different ball <laughs> it's of wax. A whole different ball of wax. Yeah. Um, the Shining, both the Stephen King novel and the Stanley Kubrick film adaptation, are texts that you return to again and again in your teaching and scholarship. What draws you back? What draws you back to the haunted house story? It's an essential element in the American experience. Mm. Um, I think that this is one of the great themes that runs through American literature. Um, on one hand, we have writers who were very positively disposed towards the future of America. Mm -hmm. The Emersons, the Thoreaus, the Walt Whitmans. But we also, at the same time, had a, counter, a counterbalance in writers like Hawthorne, Poe, and Melville. Mm. And they too represent the American experience as much as the transcendentalists do. Sure. It's just a matter of what side of, of, of the woods <laughs> uh, you're entering into. Mm. Good point. Is The Shining one of those, it, so The Shining must have some sort of core something that, that, that makes it as good as it is, both the book and the movie, and brings people back? It, it has that, that essence? I, I think so. Um, I, I think that there's, oh God, there's a way of talking about The Shining that I think is really fab fabulous when you're talking with students, mm -hmm. because every one of the, those students has read The, the Great Gatsby. Okay. And I love to talk about The Great Gatsby in light of The Shining, especially the film version of The Shining, mm -hmm. because Kubrick was so interested in making it connect to the 1920s and the experience that went on in the, in the jazz age. Mm -hmm. And I think that when I talk to the students about what makes this a film about the 1920s hmm. and how does that time period, how does that time frame connect to the 1970s, which is where Kubrick was, of course, filming it, right. um, it, it makes for interesting conversation. And does the novel have the same sort of inclination of the 20s? No. The novel okay. does not. The novel focuses more on post-World War II 40s and early 50s. Okay. Uh, King was much more interested in talking about what happened uh, as a consequence of World War II. Mm. Uh, Kubrick wants to go back to the 20s. Hmm. And there's hmm. lots of reasons for that that we can't go into right now. <laughs> that, are, that, that are deep <laughs> and, and dark as those woods you were talking about. <laughs> Um, a Haunted House movie that came out before Kubrick's The Shining is Amityville Horror. That right. might be the big haunted house movie. I mean, The Shining is a haunted hotel. It still works. In King's book, Dance Macabre, which is a nonfiction book he wrote, he analyzed Amityville Horror and called it a metaphor for national financial anxiety um, and home ownership. A parable on American financial distress. <laughs> yeah. Help me out with this. I thought the Amityville horror was just about a family who was haunted by ghosts, blood on the wall, and all this other stuff. You know, for, for me, Keith, the, the, the reason I've gotten interested in the Gothic for all these years, and I would include the Amityville horror in, okay, as sure. part of the Gothic, is because I think the Gothic is, is a reminder to us of what's going on by way of subtext. 
Um, I, I'm less interested in the gore and the guts that, that are part of the Gothic tradition, mm -hmm. the visceral part of the Gothic mm -hmm. tradition, as I am as a metaphor. And, and when King talks about it in terms of home ownership and, sure. and uh, the economic strife that was, was current when the Amityville Horror comes out, it makes perfect sense. I mean, that's the best way to read the Gothic. It speaks to us about the things that we can't talk about mm. or that we don't want to talk about. Mm. Uh, even though there are still those tropes, you know, in Amityville Horror, the basement holds all sorts of secrets, um, buried secrets perhaps, The Shining is the same way. Right. A um, lot of buried secrets in haunted houses. Speaking of which, um, what do the hotel, the house, the hotel in The Shining, the house in Amityville Horror, in the home of the Usher family, in the uh. fall of the house of Usher, do they have anything in common, those three, those three structures? Uh, the secrets. <laughs> secrets, that, that's yeah. The, that's the best way to start <laughs> talking about it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've always read The Fall of the House of Usher as a tale about uh, the secrets, but the, uh, that's the thing about the Gothic. It, it delves into personal secrets, familial mm. secrets, but it also can sometimes delve into cultural secrets. And I read The, the Fall of the House of Usher as a story about slavery. Hmm. And, and the blackness of, of denial that's part of the Usher legacy. See, this is, this is why I think King's on target when he talks about reading the Gothic as, as a metaphor, mm. as a way of talking about something larger than just the issue that's at hand. Right. For me, Usher is a story about a family that's in, that, that's in disarray and, and dissolution. Right. And part of that is because of the guilt that comes with the history of the Usher legacy. Yes. And I think there's enough evidence in the story to talk about the Usher legacy as one of slavery. Hmm. Hmm. Not a very transparent family, the Ushers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, is there a book or movie about haunted houses or ghosts that you would recommend that isn't considered, you know, from uh, two white writers, two masters of the genre, Poe and King? Well, sure. There's uh, there's always there, there's always the haunting or the haunting of Hill House. Mm -hmm. That's a really good Shirley, Shirley Jackson. Jackson. That's a yeah. really good example of a yeah. the feminine gothic, mm -hmm. um, and especially because the, the feminine gothic all, often is more subtle mm. than the masculine gothic. The masculine gothic has a, has to have a lot of of, uh, of tropes going through it, a lot of a, a lot of bells and whistles, it were. The feminine gothic is usually more subtle. More subtle. It, it talks about issues that are germane to being female mm. in this culture, or f female in general, I right. think. Right, and family and things like that. Absolutely. And definitely in Haunting of Hill House, there's a lot more about the, the nuclear family, a little different than Stephen King's nuclear family that moves into the, the overlook. That's true, but it's, it's also more personal, too. Mm. I mean, uh, Shirley Jackson, I think, had a real understanding of what it was like to be a female in the 40s and 50s. Right. You know, and, and what, that, what that meant in terms of the limits, in terms of the, the kind of mental, uh, mental problems and, dis mm. and, and uh, um, issues that were germane to being female. Right, right, at that time, at you that know, time. at that time in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Is there an example of, I was, I was trying to think of that, I got one for you and, and just curious what you think of this. Of course, movies use different tropes, use different ideas, you know, different genres, genre except itself. Um, is there an example of a movie or a novel that isn't a ghost story, but uses the sort of ideas of the ghost story to tell it? The one I thought of was Alien, oh. the Ridley Scott movie, which is essentially a haunted house movie about, you know, uh, not a ghost, but a monster stalking, you know, the house happens to be a spaceship, but. I, I, I feel that the alien is one of the, that alien, all three of them, mm -hmm. or four of them, sorry, all four of them, are, are absolutely great films. And I would also say that uh, it, it's a wonderful way of talking about a variety of issues that are at work that, ger that are germane to the Gothic. Mm. And one of the main things is, especially in that first version of the alien, you don't see the monster. Right. The monster is constantly kept from the viewer. You just see the effects that the monster has had in terms of its <laughs> ravaging the crew, for <laughs> right, example. Right. But it's a, you know, it's a wonderful tale about, um, uh, about all the issues that are part of the, go uh, of the ghost story mm. uh, or the haunted house story. Every, everything's falling into disarray. Right. Um, you've, got this, you've got this creature that can't be controlled mm. uh, and that 
rises up. Right. Uh, and it's it's a it's just a great way of of using all of the all of the iconography of the Gothic mm. and bringing it into science fiction. Right. And that's the thing about the Gothic. It melds with everything. Works with everything. It works with everything. It, I mean, sometimes it's connected to the, the science fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's connected to the detective genre. Right. Crime. Crime stories. Crime yeah. stories. Sometimes it's connected to uh, comedy. <laughs> you know, and, and it doesn't always work so well in any of those things, but right. when it does work, it's a wonderful way of, of right. combining flavors like peanut butter and chocolate. You know, <laughs> not, that's not supposed to work, but right. it does. And you also have those anxieties, like you were talking about, those metaphors, anxiety over home ownership, all over making it that come out in Amityville horror and, and come out in The Shining as well. I mean, Jack Torrance is trying to make a better life for himself and his family. That's right. And, you know, he has that anxiety and he wants to be, uh, you know, he's a striver. He's an American in all those ways. And uh, th those anxieties, uh, you can play with those anxieties if you are a malevolent force, right. let's say. All, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. It does. It certainly, it certainly does. Um, do you have a favorite haunted house movie? God, I, I would, I, I'm really fond of both Alien, because I, I agree with okay. you, I think that is a haunted house movie, yeah. and of course, I keep coming back to The Shining because of right. the richness, the denseness of metaphor mm -hmm. that's at work in, in The Shining. Mm -hmm. In the movie and the novel? Both. Both, yeah, okay. I, 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 could, I, I could teach both of them. <laughs> you know, I, and someday I want to do that. I want to do both of them at the same time. Same time. You've never done that, huh? Never done that. Oh, well, there's time. There's time. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw in a vote for a movie that I like called House, which is a, a Japanese horror movie, which is, if, you have ne if, if aliens came down and this is the first thing you ever showed them about a movie, I think they would think it was the most amazing, wacky thing you've ever seen. So, House, uh, definitely uh, worth checking out. It may, it may put them back on their spaceship. <laughs> it may put them back on the spaceship. <laughs> um, I want to thank everyone here uh, at WCAX who's behind the scenes, who works to make us look so good and sound so good, and thank you for stopping by Across the Fence. Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs>